And I'm going to come back in with the line tool to clean this up a little bit. So I press L. And so I'm just kind of selecting these areas here. Press the pound key. And then we can go ahead and delete some of these spots. So typically I like to um, cut out the whole outline of the image first. And then once I've done that, then I go back in and clean up the rest of the image. You can actually s usually select multiple lines. Okay. Just do it that way. See if there's anything else we might like to sharpen up a bit. Now I'm doing this scroll by holding down my scroll, uh, my roll ball on my mouse, and um, holding it down and pressing shift key. It just kind of pans it. Or if I just roll it, then I can zoom in. So I'm pressing L for line. And I'm going to cut off that line, pound key. I'm sorry, spacebar. Deleting. Okay. And I think that's good enough. So let's look at our shadow. There's our shadow that it casted. Now, great, but wait, we have this outline here. So we're going to have to do something about that. So I'm going to right click on the image again and edit to group. And we're going to go in and hide these lines. So I can just click on it, right click, and select hide hide and in some cases the lines weren't drawn continuously so they um, they don't allow you to select a long line it'll just only allow you to select a little bit of the line so I'm gonna see if I can get a bunch here no I actually I will do hold the shift key down to unselect Hey, we just stumbled upon something here. I'll just select it all. Okay. Looks like I got a line here still too for some reason. Let's try it again. There we go. And I'm going to hide. And let's try to select this back here. And hide. Oops. Okay, so that was, I just did a control Z. That was part of the object, this line right here. So I'm going to unselect those, hide what's left. Let's zoom in, see what's over here. Whoops. Wrong button. Zoom. Okay. Quickly hide these lines. And there may be one back here. If there is, I will hide that. Okay, and we're out of the edit group by doing that. And there's now no more line around it. So we have the image here, and it's just stationary fully in one place. As we change the light direction, you can see the shadow change. And it's starting from the foot here, from the ground. So this might be a little bit problematic with someone sitting down because the way the shadow will cast, um, you might you might rather have two feet placed on the ground and then the shadow will start from the feet location. But this gives you an idea of how to do the cutout. So now we have the cutout. What I like to do after this point is I make it into a component. And sometimes my component window doesn't show, so I gotta bring it up and it's wondering which components so I'm going to say the one that's in the model here's the gal that I Susan that I deleted here's the new one I'm going to give it a name worker sitting one okay so that name is in there um, now there is this option you can say always face the camera what that'll do is no matter what we do looks like I got a little line in there I'm going to need to get rid of no matter what we do, if we have this on, wherever the camera goes, she is going to face. So if you notice, 
no matter where we turn she is still facing the camera so in some cases when you're doing plants that's a pretty cool thing to do because in the plant the tree always looks it looks almost like a billboard like the old uh, video game billboards it looks like it's kind of playing like 3d um, however in people you know this this lady's sitting down you're not going to want her to always face the camera because it's going to look like she's moving even though she's supposed to be sitting down so I will turn that off and then if you notice it just stayed where it was so I better see if I can get her back to where I want her right there let's see if that'll do it turn it off there we go we're back okay so I've got her created as a component so what does that mean let's close that out what that means is now if I go into my windows and component option any of these that I have created I can now just um, click on that person and drag them into the scene or hit escape and get rid of them. See I can bring in a duplicate of her. Um, one thing I'm going to want to do is I'm going to go in and clean this up if I can if it allows me. Let's edit the, um, the component. Let's see if that will do what I want. And I'm going to just try to hide that Let's see if that did it. And one thing I can do to also check, I'm going to just move her over just a bit. Okay, look, it is gone. So that's perfect. So now what I can do is save as. And I'm going to save this. Okay, I'm going to save it so that I can bring it into my other set that I'm working on. Um, and it's a SketchUp file. Save. Okay, so we've got her saved now. I'm going to go ahead and close out of that. And I'm going to go to my big set that I'm working on. Let's put her right back here. Okay, so off to the side here, I have my folder with all my SketchUp models. I'm going to go ahead and just drag her into the scene. Okay, and she came sideways, so we're going to need to rotate her. So I'm going to press Q. I want her to go the other way. Let's see if it can be done. and let's move it over we're gonna obviously have to scale this one down so I'm gonna press the S key for scale shrink it down a bit and M for move let's go in there a little bit And let's see if I can do the. I'm going to just try to rotate her, spin her just a little bit. Maybe not so much. Sometimes it could be pretty drastic. Nah, I don't like that. Okay, we'll just leave her there for right now. And I'm going to scale her down just a little bit more. So in my scene, there she is. She's in the background. That looks a little high, doesn't it? Okay, so granted, this she's in kind of an angle, so she's not going to be like totally appearing on the ground um, but we can see and she actually is on the ground it's just the angle that we're seeing if we're looking maybe a little more down on the image it looks a little more believable so that's kind of what you play with too is um, what is actually 
believable um, in these cutouts. There she is. Okay. Now I'm going to turn on the shadows and we'll see how all this plays together. Okay, we can't exactly see her shadows because they're being covered by the building. Let's see if we can move the shadows around. This this is a large set, so it does take quite a while to recalculate the uh, shadows. Okay, so that looks a little better. You can see that her shadow has been casted a little more. It's going to take me a while to do this, but ideally I'd like to see her shadow go in, a, in another direction. One thing I've discovered, though, is that with the legs kind of one higher than the other, since this one is not on the ground, it will show kind of a weird shadow because that leg being off the ground. Whereas you see these characters here, their feet are a little more flatter on the ground, so you can see it starting at the feet. So um, that's the end of this tutorial. Um, it is pretty neat what you can do with uh, Google SketchUp as far as creating shadows. You can use this to cast shadows into your environment. And this will apply to anything like buildings or trees or animals, any objects that you're trying to create. You can use this method to do it. So thanks for watching the video. Have a great day.